Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in to Video Entertainment Studios for this episode of Video Movie Reviews. I'm the Nerd Lust Daddy, and today we continue our series reviewing every North American live-action video game film adaptation theatrical release. And for this week's review, we're going to take a look at one of the video game film adaptation genre's most notorious offenders, 2009's Street Fighter The Legend of Chun-Li. Oh, Chit Fighter, I hear this one is bad. Maybe so, kids, but let's see for ourselves and give it a fair shake. Now, Street Fighter The Legend of Chun-Li was released in North American theaters on February 27, 2009. At this time, 20 games in combinations of original releases, sequels, reiterations, and compilations had been released in the series. To save time and space, we're going to omit listing all of the sequels, reiterations, and compilations and just mention the mainline release and if it had reiterations or sequels. The games are Street Fighter, Street Fighter 2 and its reiterations, Street Fighter Alpha and its sequels, Street Fighter EX and its reiterations and sequels, Street Fighter 3 and its reiterations, and Street Fighter 4 and its reiterations. We're going to pull from the plots of the Street Fighter 2 and the Street Fighter Alpha series and the Street Fighter EX series from Chun-Li's perspective as just a loose comparison as her vendetta against Bison is the main point of her story in these games. Now the general background and plot for Chun-Li in the games revolves around her being an expert martial artist that works for Interpol. Her father was a Hong Kong police officer that was investigating the criminal organization Shadaloo and attempting to capture its leader. During the investigation, he comes up missing and is presumed dead. Chun-Li then begins a mission of vengeance, trying to track down the leader of Shadaloo, M. Bison, who's presumed to have murdered her father. Chun-Li frequently enters the World Warrior Tournament in an attempt to track down, defeat, and bring Bison to justice, as Shadaloo is frequent host to the tournament and Bison is its champion or final challenger. Now the film takes place before any of the game's canon or storylines and serves as an origin story for the death of Chun-Li's father, the formation of her vendetta against Bison, and her growth as a martial artist before ever entering the tournament. It starts with Chun-Li as a young girl who's learning to play the piano as her father dreams of her becoming a famous concert pianist. Her family eventually moves from San Francisco to Hong Kong where she continues to practice piano as well as begins learning the martial art wushu from her father. One day, her home is attacked by members of Shenmue, Balrog and Bison are specifically involved, and her father Ziang is kidnapped by them. We then fast forward to Chun-Li as a young woman who is now an accomplished concert pianist in the middle of a performance. At the end of her performance, while in her dressing room, she's delivered a mysterious ancient scroll written in Chinese. Elsewhere in Shadaloo, Bison is meeting with other heads of the corporate front for their criminal activities and announces his plans to take over everything for himself and that he will allow the other members to live their lives in wealth and peace if they agree to hand over their stakes. Outraged, they all refuse and leave the room, only to be attacked and killed by Vega for refusing. We then cut to Interpol agent Charlie Nash meeting Detective Mai Suni for the first time on the scene of discovering the former Shadaloo shareholders in a cargo container beheaded. Charlie recognizes Bison's work and warns Maya that she doesn't want to get involved with this investigation, but she's driven by her duty to do so and they team up to try to bring Bison to justice. Chun-Li eventually takes a scroll to a woman who deciphers it for her and tells her she must go to Bangkok and find a man named Gen who can train her to be an extremely powerful martial artist. She heads off to find Gen, as well as track down Bison and avenge her father. Well, this doesn't match up with any of the plots of the games, it doesn't even align with Chun-Li's backstory from the games either. It is really off the mark here, and I think it is an extremely poor interpretation of her origin story. Easy chip fudger for me. Pids, what did you think of the plot? Chip fetter! Well, how about the setting of world representation? We get to see Hong Kong as well as Thailand, which are settings within the Street Fighter universe. We also do get to see some pretty decent martial arts fights, but seeing fighting in a Street Fighter movie as an expectation is a pretty low bar. Otherwise, way too much is altered. Shadaloo is represented as more of an evil corporate organization than a straightforward criminal one. Uh, the characters are represented atrociously and look nothing like their counterparts in the games. They outright butcher Bison's background. Uh, this is another easy chit fudger for me. Pids, what did you think of the setting of world representation? Chit fudger! 
All right, I'm going to keep the characters brief here and focus on ones that are prominent within the games as well as within the film. Let's start off with Detective Maya Suni, played by Moon Bloodgood, known for her roles in Terminator Salvation as well as the TV series Falling Skies. Here she plays the detective that teams up with Charlie to try to track down Bison. Unfortunately, this original character is awful. She has no character arc, and she serves only as a romantic and sexual interest to Charlie. She's just here to be an object, and it's extremely disappointing. Absolute chitfutter. Hits your thoughts on Maya. Chitfutter! Charlie Nash. Portrayed by discount Keanu Reeves, Chris Klein, who's known for his roles in the American Pie film series and the TV series The Flash. Here, he plays the adaptation of Charlie from the games, and it's spectacularly awful. Not only is his career role wrong, as in the games he's a member of the United States Air Force along with Guile, but the representation here has him being portrayed as a sleazy womanizer that just objectifies Maya pretty much the whole way through the film. It's a seriously grown and eye-roll inducing portrayal, borderlining on the offensive. This is a straight chitfutter. Pids, your insight. Chitfutter. Again, played by none other than veteran martial arts movie star Robin Cho, known for his role as Liu Kang in the Mortal Kombat films, as well as Gobai in Beverly Hills Ninja. Here, he plays an adaptation of the character again from the games. Here, though, he's much younger and does not have a past relationship and tied to Chun Li through her father. But the performance here still is strong as a former assassin and martial arts master who helps to train Chun Li. Honestly, this character and Robin's performance is one of the extremely few good things about this movie. I can give him a ho woo. Pids, what did you think again? Ho woo! Vega, portrayed by Taboo of the Black Eyed Peas fame. Here, he plays the adaptation of the character from the games. Unfortunately, we have another terrible adaptation and performance here. He looks nothing like the flamboyant, narcissistic Spanish ex-bullfighter like from the games other than having a claw. He rarely ever utters a word other than during a fight with Chun-Li. It's just a terrible representation and performance all around. Easy chitfutter here. Pits, you're inside on Vega. Chitfutter! Balrog. Played by Michael Clark Duncan, known for his roles in Daredevil, Armageddon, and The Green Mile. Here, he plays the ex-champion boxer and one of Bison's lieutenants. While he doesn't look like the character from the games, I think the performance here is strong. He comes off as one of Bison's loyal lieutenants, and the screen time with him never feels flat or wasted. It would have been nice to have the character be more accurate overall, but what Michael was given to work with here is passable, so a passing hawoo from me. Pids, what did you think of Balrog? Hawoo! M. Bison, portrayed by Neil McDonoghue, known for his roles in Minority Report, Walking Tall, and Band of Brothers. Here he plays the adaptation of M. Bison from the games, the ruthless leader of the criminal organization Shadow, and master of psycho power. While the portrayal here is one of a ruthless man without compassion and mercy like in the games, the background for him is atrocious and nothing like in them. Furthermore, he looks absolutely nothing like Bison from the games. Raul Julia did it a hundred times better in the Van Damme Street Fighter film. This one's a chitfutter. Hid's thoughts on Bison. Chitfutter! Chun-Li. Played by Kristen Krug, known for her role as Lana Lang in the TV series Smallville. Here, she plays the character Chun-Li from the games. The portrayal is alright here as a woman with a vendetta on a mission to seek out vengeance against Bison for what he did to her family and her father. We do get a somewhat accurate representation of her look eventually, but there are some misses that I can't ignore regarding her background. At best, I can give her a passing a woo. Pids, thoughts on Chun-Li? Ha woo! Alright, time for our final verdicts. This movie's just unbelievable. At first, I thought it had gotten a bad rap, and I did my best to go in without bias. It was doing decent for me up until the time Charlie was introduced, and then I began to see the cracks form and watch the entirety of this film crumble. Let's go to the Pids first and see what he thinks of Legend of Chun-Li. Pids? Chit-futter! Absolutely, Pids. 
this is a hardcore chip fudger. From the utter lack of the plot aligning with the games to the poor representation, and let's not forget the borderline offensive representation of Charlie, this movie is gutter trash. The most I can give it is a 2z out of 10z. One point, just because it's a viewable movie, and the other point is for some decent fight scenes, but those in no way make this movie worth watching. I don't care who you are, whether you are a street fighter or martial arts film fan, stay as far away from this thing as possible. It truly is as bad as the reputation that precedes it. The Pids and I want to thank you all for once again tuning into Video Entertainment Studios for this episode of Video Movie Reviews. If you enjoyed our video, please be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and share to show your support. And don't forget to also check us out and subscribe on Twitch, as well as follow us on Twitter. Until next time, I'm the Nerd Lust Daddy, as always reminding you all to not be chip fudgers to each other. Body autonomy for all, reproductive rights for women, and peace, love, and happiness to all. Get us out of here, pids. Thank yous all for watching. See you next week. <laughs>